Hey everybody, it's me, Angela Walters. Thank you for joining me for another live weekly chat. I was just kind of thinking about how this really started out of the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along, a video series on free motion quilting, and then it just kept going. And I really enjoy it, and I hope you are too. And for those of you that are new to the live chat, this uh, basically for about a half an hour, I'll talk about something quilting related and then answer your questions. And then if you get on early, there's a live chat and we kind of answer, uh, you can post your questions there. And so I've written down what we're gonna cover today. Plus I have some pictures and some tips for quilting your swirls. First of all, let's talk about the weekly giveaway. Um, what I do in my chats is do a weekly giveaway, obviously, and this week's winner is Lisa Larson, and she's already been emailed about that, so congratulations, Lisa. And next week's giveaway, or the prize I'm giving away now, is this Ink Rainbow panel. So this is a cute panel with 20 different strips of fabric, all, you know, four inches by 21, so it's a great little sampler, and I featured it on my newest episode of The Midnight Quilter, and I'll be showing you that quilt here in just a second. But to win that, all you have to do is, after the video is over, click the description box, see more button, and there'll be a link in there. So you click that link and just enter your name and email, and I'll draw a winner next week. So good luck, hope you win. All right, so this week we're talking about swirls, and um, I just wanna say I love coming up with topics, and a lot of the topics I pick are based off of what you're asking in the chat, so be uh, feel free to let me know what it is you want to see. But swirls are the most in my opinion, the most versatile design out there. I've never seen a quilt that wouldn't look good quilted with swirls. So if you're only going to learn one design, this would be it. But they're also, it's also that kind of design that some people struggle with. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how to get that smooth circle, how to get it round, how to hide a mistake if you make it, and then also how you can really build it up and make it something really cool. So hopefully by time we're done, you'll feel more inspired and less intimidated by the swirl design. So we're gonna start out first with some pictures of quilting. So this is like, this is my persuasive argument to make you love swirls as much as I do, all right? And then after I show you some pictures and talk about it, then we'll go to my handy dandy drawing board, my whiteboard, and we'll actually see some of these um, come together. So I'll try to pop in on the chat every once in a while and see if there's any questions. I can't monitor it all while I'm talking. So if I don't address your question, feel free to leave it in the comment section after the video's over. I'll definitely get back on there and answer from time to time. And other people will help answer as well. All right, so let's talk about swirls. Let's look at some pictures. So this is the cathedral quilt that was featured on the most recent episode of the Midnight Quilter featuring the panel I just showed you. And this quilt, first of all, was way too much fun to quilt. I'm not even gonna lie. I had so much fun with it, um, changing all the thread colors and doing all stuff. But it's a great example of how many different ways you can use swirls on a quilt. In this one quilt, I've used them in three different ways, and I'll show you how I did that. But also, you can go from a basic all over to a motif, like a swirl chain, and then even to where you're making areas pop with your, sur your swirls. So it really is such a great, versatile design. All right, let's look at a little close up. So here, we're kind of zooming in on one of those corners of the quilt. And when you see that swirl chain going diagonally across the area, all that is, it's the same shape repeated over and over again. There's nothing complex about it. The hard part is getting those smooth lines. So when it comes to quilting designs, some of them are hard to figure out the shape. Others are easy to figure out the shape, but hard to execute, and that would be a swirl. Everybody can kind of figure out what a swirl, how to make one, it's the execution that sometimes needs a little help. So even though that might look like crazy, it's actually easy once you get the hang of it. And I know you're probably rolling your eyes being like, no, I don't believe that, but it is. And then I put smaller swirls around it as a filler. So taking the same exact shape and just shrinking it down and filling in that area. And that's why that swirl chain is kind of popping out because I have that contrast in density behind it. And then around the fabric, you see those little dots or those circles popping out. There I'm using the swirl to really build up uh, the thread around it, making that unquilted area pop. And so when I'm talking about quilting, I always say that people will notice a um, gap in the quilting before they notice a mistake, right? So as long as the whole area is filled in, it's gonna look fine. In this instance, I'm doing it on purpose because I want that area to pop out. I want to draw attention to that little dot. So three different ways using one simple shape. And honestly, it's fast. It's a lot faster than other designs. And then this is just kind of zooming in real close. Now, next week we'll be talking about uh, marking tools and when do I mark and how can you use marking to your advantage. 
Um, you can still see maybe around that, that bottom left circle, there's a little bit of blue residue that I didn't quite get off. This is a perfect example of sometimes marking the placement, but not necessarily the design. It wasn't marked to give me that circle, it was just marked to tell me that's kind of where I want it. So we'll definitely be talking about that next week. I can't wait to get into it um, and talk about marking tools, but that's just a little, little teaser. But other things you can do with swirls is you can combine them with designs. And if you watched my, um, I think my trunk show or my help, how do I quilt it? I've showed this picture before, but it's just one of my favorites. But the swirls combine so well with other designs. It's just like the most friendly design there is. It just gets along with everybody. And so we'll talk about how you can combine designs with the swirls to create some different effects. Um, it's crazy to think that that quilt, that quilting right there is just swirls and straight lines, that's all it is. But it's the density and the, the changing up of those designs that really makes it look more intricate than it is. And another little bit closer picture. So we have those swirls kind of going along and the bubbles around it and combining it with paisleys to give it that little bit of a more elegant swirl chain look. So really easy to combine with other designs. And like I said, we will talk about that. And just another example of combining or transitioning. So one of my favorite um, techniques, I don't use it a whole lot, but it's always a go-to, is when you can go from one design to the other and make it look like it's blending. Well, this is the perfect example. If swirls can blend with two shapes, the pebbles and then these little echoed pebbles down here, it's gonna allow me to kind of transition. So it's just a really good, good versatile design. And I know that all the pictures I'm showing here, you here are kind of over the top or really you know, complex. It still looks as good if it's not as detailed as I like to do it. And then here, this is a quilt that Tula um, revealed on her Tula Tuesday chat. Had so much fun chatting with her. Um, but that just shows you the same swirl chain that we saw with a little bit more embellishment, a little bit more detail, just a little bit more um, you know, elegant. So, whether you do it as an all over or you go real crazy and add stuff to it, it's still the same shape. So this should be encouraging, right? If you're struggling with swirls, then you'll eventually you'll get it and you'll be able to do some wonderful things with it. And another last picture of this quilt. So again, the swirl chain in that area, you can make it go in different directions. It doesn't have to go in a straight line. It can curve, it can turn. So really just getting comfortable with that shape is going to help out so much. All right, so now that I've shown you that, I have my whiteboard, I have my marker, and we're gonna get into the designs themselves, all right? So let's talk about how a swirl is formed. Most of us could probably do this, but we gotta start with the basics, right? So a swirl is a line that just curves in on itself and then finishes and echoes back out. So the most important thing about this shape, though, is that you wanna finish the swirl. <laughs> I always love teaching this in class because this is a thing that most people forget. They forget to finish and echo their way back out of the swirl. So let's talk about that. So when I quilt my swirl in like this, I'm gonna echo my way right back out the way I came. Now, sometimes people will say, well, what if I echo along the inside? I don't care what you echo, just get out of the inside, right? Sometimes we overthink it too much and we really don't need to. We just need to get in there and get out. Um, you notice my swirl face down. What would happen if it went the other way? Nothing, nothing would happen. It's gonna be exactly the same. So don't overthink it. I think sometimes we're looking for problems to worry about and we really don't need to. Okay, so we're going to quilt our swirl. We're gonna finish it, which means I'm gonna echo my way back out before I go on to my next one. Then from there, if I want to, I can just quilt my next swirl facing whatever direction I want. And then I'm going to what? Finish that swirl, echo my way back out until I get ready to run into something and then change direction, okay? So what happens sometimes, and there's nothing wrong with this, sometimes we'll do this kind of thing, let me find where you can see here, where we'll, we'll make our swirl, but we won't finish it, we'll go right into the next one, and you can't see that, but I'll come back over here, and we kind of get this shape, and that's fine, but it doesn't look the same. Well, what's happening here is what? I'm not completing that swirl. So I need to go into my circle, my swirl, and then come back out. Doesn't matter how I do it, I just need to do it. Okay, so let's talk real quick about echoing or that shape that we're creating. Once we quilt our swirl, we're just echoing that line we've just quilted, right? We're just going right around it. Well, echoing is one of those things that you're gonna hear a lot when you listen to me talk, but definitely when it comes to swirls. So when I'm echoing this shape or quilting the same shape a distance outside, here's the trick. You have to look ahead of where you're at. If you're looking right at the needle, it's really hard to see what's going on. So you have to look ahead in the direction you're going and trust your hands to bring you there, which I know can be a little scary, 
but it really will help you get those smoother lines. So if I see somebody that's quilting, I'm, my drawing is shaky because I have shaky hands, but if I see that it's looking pretty not smooth, what's happening there is they're overthinking it and they're not just looking ahead, right? So look ahead and get it close. Thing about swirls is you're going to quilt them over and over and over again. If you don't get the first one or 20 right, it's going to be fine. All right, so here's my swirl in, my echo out. Now let's talk about this shape though. You don't have to look at the density and think that that's the shape it need, or the, the density it has to be. Let me start over. If you're looking at a design, you can make it as dense or as less dense as you want. This spacing between the lines is up to you. If I'm using this as a filler, they're going to be really close, more like an eighth or a quarter inch apart. If this is a swirl chain or it's a quilt that I just need to get finished, then it's going to be more like a half of an inch. So whatever that spacing is, totally fine, it's up to you, but that's what you're gonna try to keep consistent throughout the design. So keeping that consistent spacing will help it all blend together. Okay, so we have our first swirl, we have our second swirl, and now I can do another swirl. And in this particular example, I call these just like a regular swirl meander. They're not touching, they're not traveling, but they are all about the same spacing, right? So from here to here to there to there, it's the same spacing. Now, I can't see the chat right now because I'm keeping an eye on what you can see on my thing, but I, if I was looking at the chat right now, I guess the question would be, how do I keep the spacing consistent, right? You're like, I tried it, it doesn't work. Well, that's unfortunately one of those things that comes with practice. I know, it's, uh, it's just not fun to say it, but it is. The more you practice, the more that will get consistent and easy for you. If you need a gauge, I would go with a quarter inch spacing because you can use the edge of your foot as a guide. You can run the edge of your foot along that previously quilted line, and that will give you somewhat of a guide. But just know it will come in practice. Okay, so here's the thing though, and I really want you to remember this. When you're looking at your quilt and you quilt a couple swirls and you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. Well, you have to keep going because you're never gonna see it just like this. You have to keep filling in the area and that's when you take in, you know, that's when you look at it and say that looks good, right? You have to see it in the context of the whole quilt. On a side note, that's why I would never send customers in progress pictures of their quilts because you can't take it out of context. You have to see it with everything. So if you're quilting, you have to keep going because that's when you'll see it all blend together. But if I'm gonna keep going in this meander, which I'm doing right now, a meander is just a design that goes repeated in, in the area. So it's a swirl repeated in the area with no discernible direction. So what I don't want is to quilt my swirls in one direction. I want it to go every which way so that it just blends, right? So if I'm gonna keep quilting swirls, what will happen is I'll start quilting them in a row, and that's fine, but I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna incorporate echoing to help me move around my area. So this echoing that we're doing outside this swirl is the same, except we're just going around a previously quilted swirl. But here's what makes it work. You want that spacing to be the same-ish, close. You know, close enough is good enough. But that's gonna make it look like more of a design, less like, swirl and then close echo. So then I can echo my way around. If you find that you're not getting, you know, you're going in one direction, you're having a hard time maneuvering around, then what you need to do is make yourself echo. So you can echo something and then quilt your next swirl, right? Echo and fill. So echo, you can echo whatever you want. Just try to keep that spacing nice and consistent. And a side note, I know it looks kind of on the screen, first of all, shaky, sorry about that, but also like oblong. That's just the perspective thing from where I'm sitting. Um, so you're gonna use echoing to fill in any gaps. You're gonna use echoing to maneuver around the area. You're just gonna use echoing when you're not sure what else to do, right? So sometimes giving yourself a routine will help. So you could say swirl, swirl, echo, swirl, swirl, echo, or just know that you can use echoing to maneuver your way around that area. Okay, so let's stick with the meander right now. We're staying right here. Um, we're gonna dive into this a little bit more and then we'll get into the more complex designs. The number one question about swirls or the number one, I'm not gonna say it's a mistake. We'll say it's a unintentional variation, but the most common thing that happens when people are trying to do it is they're getting like this, right? So it's like a squared off swirl. Okay, we have two choices. We can just say that's mid-century modern and keep doing it. If you use that over and over again, it's gonna look fine. It's, as long as it's consistent. Um, but if you're seeing this not smooth line, it could be two things. One, you're just getting comfortable with the shape. When you can move through that shape without pausing or thinking it's more like a momentum, 
it, it goes a little bit easier. Uh, number, a second thing is sometimes we'll think, if I just slow down and I don't breathe and I just quilt real slowly, maybe I'll get that round swirl and that is not the case. We want that momentum to swing us through to get that smooth line. So if I were to have you all draw a circle with a pencil real slow, right, it won't be smooth. But if you just do a quick circle, you'll have that smooth line. Will it be perfect? No, but we want smooth, not perfect. So if you're having trouble, you might be going too slow, right? You might be going too slow out of that cur circle to get that curve. Now, when I'm faced with making a mistake or when, I'm, when I have the option between two things I'm doing wrong, I would rather have this line smooth than to have the spacing consistent. So if you're, if you're struggling, you're newer at it, and you're like, I can't do both, focus on smooth. Look ahead, move smoothly through that swirl, and then when you stop, that's when you can stop and breathe and freak out, right? But not when you're in that curve. Now, it was a great question that came up um, from D, just for essential D Farg. The question was, when this person, he or she, is coming in or out of that swirl or stopping and starting, um, the control is a little off, and they're, they're wondering, why can't I have that control right at the beginning? That's totally normal, and you'll get used to that. You, you just have to get comfortable with your machine, like how do you push the pedal, how do you move your hands, it will get, it'll get better. But if you're going to start and stop, this is the place to do it, in a point. That way, if there is a little bit of a momentum issue, it's going to be in the point and it won't be as obvious. So if I'm going to stop, I'm not going to stop anywhere along this curve. Sometimes I'll be quilting and my kids will come in the room and I'm like, hold on, don't talk to me. I got to finish this swirl and then, then I can talk to you. <laughs> so another thing about this <clears throat> is sometimes we think maybe if I use a stitch regulator, it'll help. Well, it could help. The thing is, sometimes you might find it a little easier to do in manual. So a stitch regulator means that as I'm moving the machine, it's going to speed up and slow down or moving the quilt, depending on the machine. But sometimes you, you kind of feel like you're pushing it. What you want is that momentum. So if you're comfortable with quilting and you just can't get that round swirl, maybe try it in manual mode. It works for about half of the people. So it might not work for you, but if it does, then you can let me know. Uh, manual mode allows you to have that more of a momentum where you're just kind of guiding and flowing with the machine as opposed to pushing it or kind of revving it up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're like, I don't have a stitch regulator, then no problem. You don't have to worry about the choice. I have a stitch regulator, but I never use it on my swirls. I can do it without it, unless I'm demoing or teaching. And then I do so I can pause while I'm going. So before we move on to other swirls, let's talk about the absolutely best way to practice. That's just bad. Hold on. You got to be able to see what I'm doing. I got to find the sweet spot. OK. The best way to practice your free motion quilting is within a defined area. And if you are at business meeting or a family gathering, drawing really helps. And we were chatting about this a couple weeks ago. Somebody was like, you always said it. I didn't believe it, but it's true. It's just helping you learn where to go. So whether you're drawing or quilting, you're going to define your area. This could be a quilt block. It could be a fat quarter. It could be something you marked or quilted. But then what you're going to do is you're going to start filling in this area with your swirls, right? Now, here's the challenge. You cannot critique the job you're doing while you're doing it. You can't stop and say, oh, that doesn't look good. No, you have to keep going, keep filling in that area. And then when you're all done, that's when you can decide what you want to work on next time. What this is going to do is it's going to make me have to deal with corners and defined edges. It's one thing to practice on a quilt sandwich or just, you know, a practice piece. It's a totally different thing when you get on a quilt and you're trying to fill in an area. So this is going to give you a jump start on that. It's going to give you a little bit of that experience. It's time to get a drink. I'm talking too much. Um, but what happens is as you start to see the whole area filled in, the individual swirls go away. As long as I don't leave any gaps. So if I happen to find that I left a gap, let's say I get over here, what am I going to do? I'm going to echo, right? I'll echo, echo, fill it in, fill it in until it's all done. Once you get the hang of that, even on paper or even on a quilt, it will help you so much. So just take my word for it, um, defining an area and filling it in. Plus, it gives you a sense of like, okay, I'm done with that area. Check it off, and then you can move on. Dry erase boards are really fun for this too. Okay. So we have our swirl shape. How can we use it in different ways? So for those of you that are like, I already love swirls. I feel comfortable with it. Let's talk about how you can um, 
uh, take the shape and change it up. Now, if you're not comfortable with swirls, just look at this and think, okay, give me a little bit, I'll be there. One of my favorite ways to use a swirl design is to do an elongated swirl. And this is what we saw on the filler of my that qu cathedral quilt or the quilt that was rainbow. Now, elongated swirl is a little different, right? So it has more of a tail. This is gonna help give me a little bit, um, it's gonna fill more of an area for me. And I'm gonna echo, echo, echo. So let's talk about this shape. That initial piece, right, it, it can be as long or as short as you want it to be, really depending on how big your area is and how big you want the quilting to be. But once you have the shape, all you have to do is echo it and echo it and echo it. So what are we doing here? We're building up that shape. We're building up the swirl so that it takes up more room and it lets it stand out from the rest. So now we're getting into longer echo lines, which can be tricky, right? So you're like, oh, it's hard enough to do a curve. But if you look ahead, move smoothly, even though these echoes aren't perfect, once I fill it in with all the other quilting, it's gonna look fine, right? So just get it as close as you can. But one thing that's changing here is now I have a shape that's directional. Before it wasn't directional, now it is. So I wanna make sure that when I go to quilt my next shape, I just take it in a different direction. For now, because I'm doing it as an all over, it's just gonna go in this direction. And then I'm gonna what? Well, you know, echo, echo, echo. Now, the one thing that will happen is I'm gonna start getting these weird little gaps right here, right? Well, what I'm gonna do is just add some more swirls, add some more echoes, and then continue on nice and long, and then echo, echo, echo. The trick with this, the trick with this is you cannot be overly concerned about each individual line. And I know that's tricky for those of you that are a little bit more particular in your designs. You have to be comfortable with just winging it because what I'm gonna do is, okay, what, I just gotta echo here. I don't know what this is gonna look like until it's all done, but I gotta trust that it's gonna be okay. But as long as I keep the lines as smooth as possible, as long as I keep the spacing somewhat consistent, that's gonna help really fill in that whole area. And I'm moving off the screen, let me come back. And echo, echo, moving my way around. I might just echo my way all the way back up here and then go on. So going in all different directions might be a little tricky at first, but just go in a different direction than the one you just quilted. And I'll tell you, on a long arm, my swirls tend to be longer and bigger than they are on a sewing machine. Sewing machine, they tend to be smaller because I don't have as much throat space or much room to move. So this shape doesn't matter. It's the spacing between the lines that will determine the density. So if you want this to be dense, you'll just quilt those lines closer together. And if you want it to be less dense, you'll quilt them further apart. Um, but what I love about this particular design as a filler is it's so fast. There's no traveling and the changes of direction are not a, a lot. You know, the changes in direction are back here and here, but I have this nice long straightaway to kind of get some speed going. So it's a really good one if you can get the hang of it, but you just have to feel comfortable filling in those areas. But this is also where we can start playing with combining different designs, right? So if I'm over here and I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm tired of this, I'm over it. I wanna do something different. Let's do some pebbles or some circles, right? That's when I can use those to fill in those gaps. And this could be anything, right? It can even be a meander, it doesn't matter. Because the most important thing is that I don't have any gaps. I don't want any gaps to make that stand out. Now, the trick though is getting to this point because usually newer quilters will quilt a couple swirls. They'll say it looks horrible and then they'll stop. You gotta keep going. Now that's the hard part, right? So what's the moral of the story? If you make a mistake, keep making more mistakes until it goes away. Well, that's hard to do, but it's true. Okay, so let's talk about the elongated swirl one more time. And we're gonna talk about how we, I used it to kind of make those circles pop. And this is, this is basically exactly how it goes together. A nice elongated line, as long as you want to be. It could be shorter, it could be longer, whatever you feel comfortable, but it's gonna end in a circle this time. So now that it's ended in a circle, I kind of have my, my pop of area. So this is for areas that you wanna draw attention. So don't put this in an area that you don't like, but then I'm gonna go around it a couple times to really build up that thread. Okay. People will say, oh, traveling, I can't get it. No worries, if you don't make it on the first time around, you'll get the second or third time. Just keep going until it's good. What this is gonna do is really make that pop. But if you're newer to it and you're like, I'm not, I'm not ready, you can just do one and then come back out. So it's up to you, depending on how much you wanna show it off. Now, I have my swirl. All I have to do is continue on, right? I'm gonna do my echoing, building it up, same thing, and then make my next one 
go in a different direction, and then now I have that, that unquilted area that's gonna show up. But again, what's the most important part? Making sure I fill in all the gaps. Filling, filling, filling. You don't want any gaps in there. So that's basically how I did that design. Now I know you're like, oh, that's easier said than done, but really, once you get the hang of this line, at ending in a circle is no different. In fact, you might already be doing it unintentionally. Like, well, shoot, I already I skipped over the regular one. I got to the advanced one. Let's see, sometimes it works that way. All right, let's talk about the swirl chain, and then I will answer your questions. Um, just know that this is something that just takes a little bit of practice. That's it. You have to look at it more like a challenge. Like, I'm going to get this, and I'm not going to let it beat me. Um, but it's, it's so much fun once you get the hang of it. There, you'll be quilting along, and you'll have a moment where, like, your brain just relaxes and wanders off and you're just quilting. It's like meditation. Anyway, so the swirl chain design is basically the same shape, right? So if I have my swirl like this, right? And then I'm gonna echo, 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 just like we've already seen. Except this time, I want my swirls to go in a chain or in a row, right? Now I want direction to draw attention to it. If going in all different directions is a meander for a motif, I want it to follow a line, whether it's straight or curved, I want it to be in a direction to move your eye. So my next one, I a little sore right there, my next one is gonna go around it, extend out in front, and end in a curl. So it's the same shape I just quilted right there, same thing, it's just flipped around. So it's flipped upside down from each other. That's the tricky part. So our brains, most of us, or maybe just me, have a hard time flipping back and forth. That's why some designs are harder than others. The ribbon candy is a perfect example. When you have to quilt it and then mirror it and quilt it and then mirror it, sometimes it takes a second to click. But the good news is once it clicks, it clicks pretty fast. Like it's just like, oh, okay, finally I got it. And then you got it. So now it's gonna come out in front because I want it to go in a row, let's go in a line. And then I'm going to what? Echo, echo, echo. And I can make these as long or as big as I want. And if you wanna show off, if you're doing a live chat and you want people to, oh, pe people to feel like they're learning something, this is right where you could throw in a little detail if you want to. Right where those V's or those swirls come apart, it makes kind of a V. And then when I'm ready, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna quilt another one that extends out, curls opposite direction. Let me see if I can move this over a little bit, there we go. And then what? Echo, echo, echo. The thing is, you know, I have to be comfortable with those long lines and I'll get comfortable if I practice, but you cannot just look at this by itself. You have to put other stuff around it, right? You have to keep going before you can judge how it looks. And if you remember, we can take our swirls in any direction we want. I can swing around, I can go over here, and then I can turn my corner if I want. So very fun, very fast. You can, again, make that spacing be whatever you want it to be. And then fill in around it depending on how much you love the way it looks. So if you quilt this design, and that was a question that came up from Ashley, what do you do when a swirl goes awry? Quilt a swirl, it's not looking like you thought it would look. Well, hopefully I've already kind of answered that. You just keep going. But when you're echoing around a swirl and that meander, remember I said keep the spacing consistent? That's gonna keep it from standing out. If I quilted this swirl or this swirl chain and it didn't turn out good, or maybe I just don't want it to be such a, a main focal point of the quilt, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some echoing around it, but I'm gonna put echoing that has the same spacing. And then what will happen is eventually, it's just gonna, you'll see it, but it's gonna blend in a little bit more. All right, so if I take my piece of paper and I cover up this side, see how it just all kind of blends in, you don't see that swirl chain. But if I quilted it and I'm like, hot damn, I did a good job, this looks great, then I can, I'm gonna put something smaller around it, something that contrasts. So different shape, different density, anything to really make this side pop out and that's gonna make it really show up. So the short answer to the question is, if you make a mistake, put more similar mistakes around it. If you quilted it and you really like how it looks, then you put con more contrasting stuff around it, uh, more things that are different. I almost said more different, that would be more different. <laughs> so that's a quick primer on swirls, but if you just remember those few things, try to keep the line smooth, keep the spacing consistent and fill in the whole area. That's gonna really change everything for you. And use a thread color that blends. That really does help as well. Um, let's see, I had another question. Oh, okay, so I did talk about this a little bit, but I'll just reiterate this. Um, Sue asked, will a, will a stitch regulator help with the quilting? And stitch regulators are a great option, especially they keep your stitches all the same length. Um, they you know, let you pause and think through a design, but moving consistently through that design is gonna be more important when, the, when it comes to the swirls. So once you get the hang of the design, sometimes 
turning off that stitch regulator will help. Now there's times when it does really help, like rulers, it's a great option, or like I said, when you're demoing in front of a group, it does, it really helps as well. So I'm gonna peek over real quick, I'm gonna just look at uh, this chat and see how it's, if there's any questions. <clears throat> oh, good question, Brenda. When I change from a swirl to a pebble, do I break thread or do it continuously? Well, let me show you. Um, I rarely break thread. Rarely, rarely, rarely. I wanna just move from one design into the next. So if I'm doing swirls and pebbles, I'm quilting my swirls, and then when I'm ready to do pebbles, I'm just gonna go right into it. Right. And it doesn't matter if it's all mixed together like this or if there's a bigger picture to it or a more of a, um, more of a design I have placed, I'm moving right into it. So remember we talked about echoing, that's what's gonna help you maneuver around. Because if you find yourself in an area that you don't wanna be, if I need to be up here because I wanna add more pebbles, I can echo and get up there and then go right into it. And that's the same whether, I mean, it could be, um, if I'm doing wishbones, any design, I'm just gonna go right into it. That's what's nice about quilting designs. I want it to be continuous. If you think about it, it's kind of like cursive writing. They just hook into each other like the letters do. Um, and sometimes I'll be asked, people say, well, how do you switch from one design to the next? You just do. You just do, but you have to be comfortable with filling in the gaps that will come out, well, that can result. And you're gonna do that with what? Echoing or putting other designs in it. So great question, um, just move from one to the next. The only time that I break thread is if I need to change thread color or I just can't get to where I need to go. Um, <laughs> LW, I usually start in the corner as if I, get, if I start getting bigger as I go, I can just say it was on purpose to add movement or scale. I change up the scale to give it a different density. Um, great idea. And that's another question, you know, the size. Have you noticed when you start quilting, sometimes the quilting gets bigger or it gets smaller. You're just kind of, there's, everybody has this natural scale or size that they normally do. So just learn in that size and then shrink it down if you want to. So great, great questions. All right. Um, Oh, Katie, this is such a good question. Uh, new to free motion quilting, do I have a video for breaking threads, starts and stops? I don't, but I, I am going to do that because I get so many questions about that. Um, I'll show you how I tie off and, and start a thread. You know what, I'll try to include that next week's um, live chat. We'll talk about that and marking. So when you're looking at your swirls, if there's nothing else I want you to remember from this live chat, it's just that you can take this shape and do a lot of stuff with it. You just have to make sure that you fill in the area as much as possible. Once you do that, you're gonna be good to go. So I would love to know what you think about quilting swirls. So leave a comment below. I know we've been chatting, but um, after the video is out, you can leave comments below. Let me know what you'd like to do with your swirls. And I will see you next week. And we'll be talking about marking out our quilts and different marking tools. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel because I come in every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central time to do the live chat. Well, I hope you all stay warm and safe and I will see you next Thursday. Happy quilting.